Jaya Balan, uh, specialist in uh, occupational health. Anyway, Dr. T. Jaya Balan. Mitsubishi tied up with the with a local company called Bear Minerals, along with uh, Abu Ngaji and a few other uh, Malay entrepreneurs to start this rare earth processing plant, of which you can see here. Now, the basically, as uh, as uh, Tan Karting put it, the process is. Uh, ancient process. There's nothing fantastic about land or nothing fantastic about Mitsubishi in the sense that uh, it's one of the oldest known form of technology and uh, the discharges, <laughs> however well you control these discharges, they will escape as we proved it in court that Vedon escaped from within the premises to the vicinity around. Now, a little uh, details. The venture took off in 79, 1982, trial runs, trial runs started. In fact, there was a talk of allowing trial runs in Linus to allow trial runs. Uh, at that time, we never had the Atomic Energy Licensing Board, the competent authority was the Ministry of Health because they were handling x-rays and others. So they gave the trial run. Export started by 1982, and uh, as earlier alluded to by Kake, it involved the crushing of monozyte tin tailings. We also imported this ore from Australia, Korea, etc. The, by 1985, there was no storage site, they kept it within the area next to the factory. And the interesting thing here is that the storage was as appalling as it would be in Linus, in the sense that uh, they, they did put it in a pond, they, did, they had uh, impermeable uh, plastic uh, lining the pond, etc. And uh, they had another system called the High Efficiency Particulate <laughs> Arrest or HEPA system, by which they claim they will be arrest of uh, removing all gaseous discharge despite such an efficient system. We did measurements around the vicinity of the ARE, and which was hardly 0.5 kilometers from the uh, village. We found that Redons were exceedingly high, and that was the basis of our court case in which they were found to be sending noxious or dangerous gases into the vicinity of the village. Now, I visited the uh, intended storage. There was supposed to be a permanent storage built in Papa, and they came out at least. They didn't come out uh, saying it's safe, but they came out saying the storage methods were very unsatisfactory and that uh, therefore uh, <coughs> the, ish, the, the uh, storage was not acceptable. So they built a temporary storage site next to the factory. The, by 1998, the new uh, uh, permanent dump site was uh, built under heavy uh, our under heavy security guard. Now a little bit of Bukibela, very urban community, about eight kilometers from the town of Ipo, city of Ipo. Now uh, they were relocated into a new village, much against their own will, because they were supplying uh, materials to the insurgent. And the storage site was like this. Now imagine what's happening now. Uh, pointer. Yeah, yeah. It's a temporary, it's not permanent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The same. It's a temporary site. Yeah, it's temporary. Right? Uh, let me tell you, even here, what I'm trying to say is that that's a pointer. Okay. The top of the front. See the clearance here. 
between the wall and the clearance here was that hardly 0.5 meters, allowing for escape of this material. These are all drums. These are drums which have, don't have anything called more than maybe 30 years or 40 years of life. So they corrode. They are already corroding in the permanent dam site. And there's already leakage. Okay, now the other thing that I wanted to tell you is a lot of people talk about uh, 14 billion years. You're talking about half-life. Half-life means in the first 14 billion years, it becomes reduced by half. And the next 14 billion years, it gets reduced by another and so on and so forth, virtually ad infinitum. But the issue again, as Kaking said, is not so much the thorium. The volume of thorium, that's a problem. The other issue is the fact that when you crush the ore, you release very dangerous gases. And one dangerous gas you release is called radon. Radon is a well-known carcinogen. Many tin miners in the United States have come down with lung cancer. And it is accepted that even in the US, any house that has got, any residence that has got unacceptable levels of radon will be found inhabitable. That means you cannot stay in these houses. Basically, you're violating the indoor air quality of these residences. So that's the thing now. Let me move. Now, the, the few things that I would like to go very fast here is that uh, uh, Content, I think maybe I'll just pass this yeah, because so I think you've already done that. This is the permanent dump site that you see here. And here, again, the leakage has already started. We have reports from concerned citizens, concerned people, that the leakage has started and it's already breaching this area and contaminating the river nearby the river Serokai and all. See, <coughs> right, let me push on further to uh, further with the uh, medical and health problems. Okay, interesting things that I wanted to point out was that uh, we, we had to document the health problems basically for the court case. So I stayed on three years within the, within the, 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 the community there trying to document the health problems people were facing. There were some surprises that I got. In the first place, we were trying to look into how much of thorium or uh, this material would have been ingested by an average child by looking at lead, the amount of lead there would be. Interestingly, we found that all the children that I tested, all those children that I tested, about 60 of them, all at toxic lead levels, meaning that they were also ingesting this radioactive material, namely thorium and, uh, <coughs> and uranium and etc. Now, the other problem that we raised in Linus was that, what about the lead? Lead is the ultimate endpoint of this whole process. 